What is up guys? I am super excited to do this review of Way Forward's River City Girls. But before I do that, I would like to give a huge shout out to Way Forward for forwarding this super fun indie game my way. Sharing this game during one of my Twitch live streams with my viewers was a super fun opportunity and I'd just like to thank Way Forward again for blessing me with this chance. So, as you're watching this review and would like to purchase River City Girls, you can find it on the PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. River City Girls pays tribute to a classic genre known as beat-em-ups. Beat-em-ups typically involves a duo or a team that takes down bad guys level by level, and every level ends with a boss. But what makes this game special is the fact that it is a spin-off of a popular beat-em-up on the NES known as River City Ransom. The female protagonists named Kyoko and Misako were actually featured in a River City game known as Shin Niketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka on the SNES. Now try saying that five times fast. And Shin Niketsu Koha Kunio Tachi no Banka, the kidnapped boyfriends and River City girls Kunio and Ricky were the actual protagonists. The beat em up genre is not as prominent as it was decades ago. So I have a question to ask. Does this game have what it takes to breathe new life into a classic retro style of genre while retaining what makes beat em ups so special? Let's get it, guys. Review time. Now let's start with visuals and sounds. The game looks visually pleasing. The vibrant color and the anime-ish style. I appreciate the clean manga art style scattered throughout the game and during the gameplay we get a more modern beautiful combination of pixel and detailed character design. The sound effects also reminds me of retro classics and the music is really great and I personally love the voice of the vocals and the music throughout the game as well. Nothing feels out of place for me when it comes to the visuals and sounds. I love it in its entirety. Let's move over to the story. The story is very simple. Two girls, Kyoko and Misako, are out to save their kidnapped boyfriends. At first, I thought River City Girls was going to only have a beginning and ending cutscene like a traditional beat em up game. One thing that is fairly consistent about the beat em up genre is the fact that the story is more or less an afterthought. Story elements are found in beat em ups, but they are never really all that fleshed out enough to really give players a chance to become more engaged with the characters themselves. I was happy to see that River City Girls has an actual fleshed out story with clean cutscenes and great voice acting throughout the game. The pacing is really well done. For instance, as you're fighting, you get moments when the profile pictures of the girls next to their respective health bars actually move and have a legit conversation during pivotal moments of the game, and I found that absolutely outstanding. I wonder who took Ponyo and Ricky. Yeah. I wonder who sent us that text message. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Check your phone, Kyoko. For what? To find out who sent us that text? Oh yeah! It says, uh, Blocked Caller. That's a weird name. The boss cutscenes were clean, and the dialogue with the bosses is extremely entertaining. I actually became fond of the bosses I encountered so far due to the great voice acting. Plus, every boss has its own versus screen. You know, a screen you would see in fighting games like Street Fighter. Another thing I loved about the story is how you get a lot of typical high school shenanigan type dialogue with 
various NPC characters you interact with throughout the game. Your name's Hiroshi, right? You remembered me. I took your lunch money once. Yeah. <laughs> water under the bridge. Not to mention, you encounter characters from previous River City titles. Not only that, but King from Tekken is an enemy in this game. Are you kidding me? The references is real. I also love how the environments were done in this game. Every level is actually filled with everyday people and structures. On top of that, the people actually react to the fights by way of flinching as attacks land. Usually levels are just swarms of enemies and that's basically it, but every level has life to it, which I really do appreciate. There are even times that some enemies are doing their own thing until you invade their personal space. Sometimes. The smallest additions can make the world a difference in the game, and all of these things are put together to create an immersive experience. Gameplay is number one when it comes to beat em ups, and based on my initial reaction as I played live, I must say this game does not disappoint at all. River City Girls took a classic style and added a unique twist to it. The gameplay is a combination of traditional beat-em-up and RPG elements. You have your light, heavy, jump, block, and special move button. You can grab enemies when they are dizzy after taking enough damage, stomp them on the ground, use downed foes as weapons, and recruit your foes as actual support. You can also parry attacks if you press the block button right before an attack lands. And weapons can also be used in this game just like any classic beat em up. To recruit foes you have to beat them down to the point that they give up and beg for their lives. And use a button to recruit them after grabbing them. You can only have one support at a time. The cool thing is every enemy has their own unique support move. For example, one guy launches dirt in the eyes of your enemies to instantly stun them. Gotta love the power of pocket sand. When your character levels up, very much like an RPG, your stats will increase and you occasionally gain new moves which can be purchased at a dojo. Your master happens to be Jimmy Lee from Double Dragon Neon. Gnarly! You can also use items you collect and purchase in shops to enhance your character and recover health. And the shock value of the moves in this game was just too good. From Chung Lee's dreaded lightning kick to my personal favorite, the dab. Dab? What? No! 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 <laughs> Dab! <laughs> no! No! We need a dab! Dab! Can you, what does it do? Look at the dab! Hey! <laughs> I wonder if I could hit him with the dash. Oh my god! That was... Oh, that was just... That was just wonderful. The purchase of new moves really does enhance the experience due to the ability to use moves that can launch your opponent in the air to execute longer combos by juggling them across the screen. I also love how the game has different quests that you have to complete which just adds more variety to the game. You're no longer just running around beating people up. My personal favorite was this quest. Cue that beautiful bean footage. Get out of my house! Now this quest in the game was actually like a little stealth mission and that my friends 
I never encountered before and then beat them up. Very impressive. Creative as well. On top of that, the boss battles get more crazier and more unique every level. One of my viewers told me that the third boss, Hibari, reminded him of the Sigma boss from um, Mega Man X. Basically referring to the design of the level and the insane projectiles you have to dodge. And I can relate to that since you could only move from left to right in that fight. River City Ransom was known for its non-linear paths and River City Girls follows the same tradition as its predecessor. You have to use a map to help you progress through the city. Waypoints are marked on the girl's phone as you encounter various characters and reach new objectives. There is only one problem I had while playing River City Girls and that was the following. Pressing the attack button to transition to other areas would oftentimes zip you back and forth, especially when enemies are already in your face. The map can also be a bit confusing when looking for specific locations for the first time. The problem with the map is a very minor thing because after you understand what is happening it's less of a problem, but I felt like that was something still worth noting. Basically some of the locations isn't accurately placed on the map. Uh, for instance, Hibari's shop was located on the bottom portion of the map but when you find the entrance needed to get to her shop it is located on the northern part of the level instead of the south so there, it just added a little bit of confusion when looking at the map and then looking at the environment that you're currently in in terms of replayability this game has a lot to offer when you compare it to a traditional beat em up game, but beat em up games are usually short in length. But after you beat this game, however, there is a new game plus mode as well as local co op. But the flaw that I see here is how there isn't an online co op mode. No online co op isn't a deal breaker, but I feel like a game such as this could really benefit from it. To be able to play this game with people around the world, especially on the go with a Nintendo Switch, would have given River City Girls more lasting appeal. In conclusion, I feel as though the collaboration between WayForward and Arc System Works really put some serious love and care into this game. And if you like indie games, I highly recommend you get this one. It's a must. The quality content of River City Girls tr is truly deserving of a $30 price tag. If I have to rate this game, it is a whopping 9 out of 10 for such an amazing modern take on a loved classic. So do it. Do it. Do it now. River City Girls. Do it. Do it. Thank you for watching this review, and I hope you have a blessed one. Peace.